you will recall from earlier this week, we spent some time reintroducing this idea of linear functions. One of the things I said was that straight lines can be stated, can be expressed in a variety of different ways. Don't give me the names, give me the algebra. What's an example of one of the ways that you know to express the equation of a straight line? Someone? Yeah, Nadine. Um, y equals this is a go-to for most of us for good reasons. From that you can read, of course, the gradient, gradient and the y-intercept. Fantastic. Give me another one, Eric. Um, Ax plus by plus c is zero. Very good. And we, of course, call this one general, general form. form. Okay. Uh, let's get maybe, there are more, but let's just get two more just for the second. Y minus y1 equals uh, m out bracket x minus x. Good. Okay, and this one is? Point gradient. Point gradient. You can literally see the point and the gradient. Just for the sake of it, let's have one more. What's the newest one I taught you? What's the newest one? Yeah, okay, so I'll give you a clue. It starts with an x over, what does a signify again? Uh, just what does this what does this number signify? And once it's in that form, it's matched the x. It's the x-intercept, right? Plus y over v. And this, just like this, is the y-intercept. What's it all equal to? So we looked at these forms, and there's um there's another one that I'm missing there. But we remembered that the point of these was when you state it in a different form, you get useful information out of it, different kinds of information. We're going to do the same thing for parabolas when we get to that topic later on. Except for one form, this guy. This guy is like the most useless form, right? What can you see off of this? Nothing. There's nothing that's obvious to you. But we make you learn it anyway. Why? Think back to uh, Wednesday morning's lesson. What, what's useful about this form? You can use the A and B for like roots as well. So you, they can go into directly into formulas for your arm. Um, Derivative. Okay, all right, so you're thinking of when we get to calculus later on. Now we'll point out calculus and differentiation and whatever these things are, very, very important, but they are like the least important thing for straight lines. For straight lines, you don't really need any fancy machinery for that, okay? On Wednesday morning, Mr. Dennis taught you a formula to use with this, yeah. It was perpendicular distance, right? I wonder if you are good enough now and have had enough practice doing the exercise to remember what the formula is. I'll give you a clue. Starts with a fraction. What's on the top? Absolutely. Yes, you're right. Ax1 plus Bye1 plus C. Pause before we go on to more. Okay, so the whole thing has to be taking the absolute value, but why is that? Why do we just sort of shoot all that in? It's a, it's a length, right? Length's positive. Okay, so that's good. On the denominator. Okay, so you've got a point. You have a straight line. This is the shortest distance between the two. It's worth pointing out there are actually other forms of the perpendicular distance formula, but this is the one that's mandated in the course. And you can see why this requires general form, right? You must be in this form. Why is that? Because we can see one. Yeah, all, all these pieces of information, these a's and b's and c's, those coefficients have to be set up in this form. Those a's and b's are not these a's and b's. They're something quite different. So today we're going to go on to another idea that requires the general form, and it's this heading, concurrent lines. Okay? Now I want you to remember, what do these words mean, because they will tell us what concurrent lines are. What does it mean when two angles are co-interior? It means they are... It's together between a pair of parallel lines. So they're both together on the inside of the parallel lines. What about collinear? What does that mean? Hmm. What kinds of objects could be collinear? Hmm. Think about it. Yeah, Eric, what do you reckon? Point. If you have one, two, three points, okay? Any two points in the world are always going to be collinear because you can draw a line and it goes through both of them. But it starts to get more interesting when you've got more than two, okay? If there are more than two and they all exist on the same straight line, we call that collinear, together on the line. So concurrent, when it refers to lines, is when you've got a bunch of lines and they are all together at a single point. Okay? So they all intersect and you can have as many as you like. Okay? So I'm going to give you a, a, an example to consider. I'm going to give you a pair of equations. I'm going to give them both to you in general form. You'll see why a bit later on. And I want you to help me work out 
What would the concurrent line be, or concurrent lines be, with the two equations I'm about to give you? So I prepared some earlier. Here we go. This first line I'm going to call L1, line 1, and it has this equation. Here's your other one. Did I say minus? We did. <coughs> okay. Now, <coughs> I'm going to pose this question to you. If these lines are not parallel, they're going to intersect somewhere. Well, at least if they're in 2D. Uh, if they're in 3D, non-parallel lines don't have to intersect, like my arms, not parallel, but they don't intersect either. But we're thinking about a plane, aren't we? Okay. So these two guys are going to intersect somewhere. How do I know that, by the way? Without drawing them or anything like that, I know these are going to intersect. You can, even if you don't know the exact value, you can see that the gradients must be different, right? Even though you don't, maybe you can't state it, though if you stare at it long enough, it's not that hard. What's the gradient this one you're going to be? Think about it. Yeah, you're going to sort of mentally rearrange to get to here. So you're going to subtract x from both sides. You're going to have to divide by 2, so negative a half. Whereas this one, three. it's just 3. three. Okay. So great, they're going to intersect. I know these two are going to intersect, but what I want is a third line that is going to intersect with both of these. So I have this situation up here. If they're all going to intersect, I'm going to need to find this point where they're all together. So can you go ahead, I'll give you two minutes, go ahead and find the point any way you like. Go for it. Okay. I have some coordinates. I know a lot of you do as well, which is great. You can see the way that I've done it. And interestingly, I was looking at your working and um, almost no one did it the same way I did, which is fine. I mean, most people who I saw did get the correct coordinates, but very few people actually decided to go about it the way that I did. I labeled the equations. Uh, I thought, well, what is going to be the quickest path? Like, does anyone have quicker working than that? Anyone? Sprite. Yeah? yeah? Close? Um, yeah, okay. So, this is a pretty quick way to do it. Let me pose this question to you. Looking at the equations I handed to you, what clues are there in the question that I should use? What's this method called again? This is elimination. What clues are there that elimination might be an efficient way to go about this? Something. Yeah, so, so these guys here, they're pretty easy to get into shape. I suppose I could have made this um, multiplied by 3, it would have been just as good. But I, I hate subtracting things, so I always mess up double negatives because it's just a, a thing I have trouble with. So if I can see, oh look, these are opposite, I'm just going to have to add them and it's super easy, it just falls out. Okay. So I asked a few of you to start drawing, if you're not quite there yet, you can as well. Uh, here's what it looks like. So which one's L1 and which one's L2? L2. You tell me. L1 is the green one, I think. No, it's the blue one. L1's blue. the blue one. Yeah, you yeah. told me at the beginning it had a gradient of negative a half, sure enough. And then here's the one with gradient 3, and you can't quite see it. Hold on, let me change. Is it my projector mode? Yeah, that'll do. Um, you can see just if you squint, that's the coordinate axis. So here we are in the which quadrant again? Second. second quadrant, right? First, second, third, fourth. Okay, so far so good. Now we have this point, but that wasn't what the question was. The question was, What's the equation of a line that is concurrent with these two? Okay. Now, the question's a bit unusual because there isn't just one line that's concurrent with this one. right? In fact, how many lines are there that are concurrent with these two? Numerous. Numerous is one way to put it. So numerous, in fact, there's an infinite number of lines. Okay. So how will we find this out? Have a look at the board. I'll get this out of your way for a second. I want you to look back at the different equations of lines that we have. Okay? The line you want, or the lines you want, can be expressed in any of those ways. You tell me which one will be the most useful. Point gradient. Point gradient. Why point gradient? You can substitute the coordinates and you find a gradient. Point gradient will be the most useful because what information do I have about this mystery line? Answer, a point. Are any of these really going to be that useful to me? Not so much. Okay. So therefore, this is the one I'm going to go for. I'm going to state it like this. Every concurrent line with L1 and L2. 
right? They all share this form because they all pass through this set of coordinates, right? I just don't know the gradient, or the gradient can be anything I like. So I'm going to write it according to this form that I've chosen to use, okay? What was y1 again? It's just one. The m is unknown because any gradient can still pass through there so long as it satisfies this point part of the equation. So I'm just going to leave m as m. And then I have in here x, it's a double negative, so this is the plus one. And I'll just pause there for a moment. Obviously I could expand out that right hand side, but because that's going to end up as an m, I'm not really going to be able to collect like terms anyway, because there's algebra and numbers, so they're just going to stay put. So, let's have a look at this. I'm going to have to bring this down now because it'd be too confusing. Is this going to do what we expect? Now, there's no way. I know I've showed you this uh, briefly before, but not for a while. If I say y minus 1 equals, and then if you introduce a pro numeral, uh, Desmos does this great thing where it says, do you want to add that in as something you can dynamically change? So I'm going to do that in a second. I need the rest of the equation. What was in the brackets? Very good. So you've got that. Oops. Not a subscript. Plus one. Go ahead and add your slide. So the first thing is, oh, that's good. Sure enough, it's concurrent, right? Uh, default, Desmos usually starts off at your mystery coefficient being one. So have a look. What does that mean on this graph? Your orange line, that's the new one. What's it doing? Gradient of one, as you'd expect. So now you can see, I can just muck about with that gradient. I can get it to change. And no matter what the gradient is, because it's in point gradient form, and I've fixed the point to be that guy right there. Okay? Perfect. I've nailed it. Okay? 